This is the bathing facility found in Mohenjo-daro. Some say that it was for ritual bath, others say that it was for elites only, and still others have doubts about both these conjectures. Nevertheless, it indicates the advanced nature of a civilization. What is this great bath? You are all familiar with visuals of the great bath. It's basically a water tank where uh, which is enclosed which was enclosed by um, uh, brick paved uh, walls brick paved uh, galleries and brick paved uh, um, colonnades now this huge tank was 12 into uh, had an area of 12 into 7 meters and a depth of almost 2.4 meters on the outside of the tank you had uh, one had a covering of about three centimeter thick of bitumen to make it waterproof. Then we come across two staircases from opposite sides of the great path leading to the bottom of the tank. So this is very interesting this entire structure architecture of the great path. There were rooms on the uh, on the uh, north and east of the great path and in one of the rooms there was a well which was possibly that was the source of water for the great path and this water was changed from time to time so from the nature of its architecture from the nature of its planning it's possible that it was meant for some special ritualistic purpose. Now, when you come to the domestic structures, Mohenjo-daro definitely gives the best example. We can, how can we talk about these houses? Archaeologists have talked about these houses, which consist of uh, rooms irregularly spaced, closing in on one or more than one courtyards. Now, these courtyards were used for more than one purpose. Collection of workshop debris, manufacturing debris have been made from part of the courtyards, which so uh, some kind of household production may have carried out there. And this was also used for cooking purposes. The houses were very solidly built. The walls were uh, more, than, uh, more than a meter, a meter to about two meters thick. Then you come across uh, doors and windows. Of course, windows, the construction of windows, it's doubtful, all the talk, some scholars have talked about it. And you hear about staircases. People talk about these staircases, which lead up to possibly an upper story. So we can, you can make out that you are, one is getting well-constructed houses. A large house of nearly 300 square meters would have about 20 rooms uh, closing in on a courtyard. Now apart from these houses, you come across 16 two-room quarters which were called the coolie lines by Wheeler. Now apart from these domestic houses, we also or domestic structures we also come across some special purpose buildings. Now, I have already mentioned uh, initially that uh, about the segregation of space of these urban centers, that often Acropolis to the west, where you have or Acropolis or Citadel to the west, and the lower town. So, we have already seen that such segregation of space is not there at all the sites. Now, what is this citadel? It was basically um, uh, meant for, it was basically a fortress adjoining the settlements and it was meant for defense purposes. Now, as I already mentioned that this segregation of space was not noticed everywhere. At Mohenjo-daro, Mithathal and Kalibangan, you see such a segregation of space. You don't see it in Harappan, Harappa, Banavali or Lothal. Now, let us take off Mohenjo-daro, which is the most well recorded here. The citadel here enclosed certain high walls and towers and we come across these special buildings within this citadel. You all know about the great path, about the pillared hall, elite residences and the granary. Now close to the great bath one comes across this huge platform on which there are these 27 smaller plinths separated by narrow passages and arranged in three rows of nine each. 
from the nature of these uh, structure and uh, seeing a similar structure at Harappa, people, archaeologists have come to the conclusion that this is the granary.